So let's look at the five different classes in the Darians. So essentially we have the Hydrozoa, the Anthrozoa, the Cyphozoa, the Starozoa, and the Cubozoa. The Hydrozoa, or exactly what it sounds like, is contained our Hydras, which also contains the, uh, the Manivore, uh, which will clarify why they're considered Hydrozoas. Um, the Anthrozoas are the sea anemones and the corals. They are all together in the same class. The Cyphozoas, these are going to be our true jellyfish. The Starozoas are considered to be stalked jellies because they're a very recent descendant of, uh, a relative of the uh, true jellies, but they're not true jellies. Uh, and then the Cubozoas, these are going to be our box jellies. Now don't confuse those with cone jellies. Cone jellies are actually another phyla completely. It's not one, so, it's not one that we necessarily cover in class because it's not one of the major phyla. And they were only recently moved out of um, Darians and put in their own phyla. Um, but free field to look up comb jellies. But box jellies are definitely a Nadarians, and they're one of the five classes that we're going to cover. So let's look into, here's another little uh, uh, screen that kind of shows the same thing we just looked at, Nadarians and all their different forms and functions. So let's look at class Hydrozoa. Hydrozoa is really neat. This is one of the this is the class that contains some of our freshwater species. But one of the defining features of these is they have very little mesoglea. They have the ectoderm and they have the endoderm, and in between there's not much space. So there's very little mesoglea on the inside. Um, most of these are colonial simply because of their the way that they reproduce. Um, they are often found in groups together. For example, here is a hydra. And you can see it's actually budding and reproducing. Here's where the buds are going to start to pop off of it. But these will all pretty much live together through most of their adult lives um, if they don't detach and float off and start their own colony. So in hydrozoas, the polyp form is found in the adults, while the medusa form is mostly found in the, in, in the young. There are some examples, uh, some, some exemptions to this, all right? Because remember, nature's never going to do anything one certain way. It's going to find infinite diversity, and you can't ever say this does this and only does this because nature's going to prove you wrong every single time. So we see this with um, with hydras. So in fresh water, the hydras only exist as polyps. They do not have a medusa form, and that's pretty daggum neat. It actually sets them apart from a lot of the other uh, uh, variations of Nadarians. They only exist as polyps. In the marine, the Gononemus vertens, this is a species that only exists as the medusa. So while they look like jellyfish, they're not. They're actually hydras. And the way to, one of the ways to tell is look at the amount of mesoglea that's in between their external and internal layers there's really not much at all. There's some other features that you can look at that will uh, help with that. For the most part, they share a lot more in common with hydras, uh, evolutionary speaking, so they're in the class hydrozoa. Now with most hydrozoas, the polyps reproduce asexually, where the medusas will actually go through a type of sexual reproduction. Um, for using uh, sperm and egg, um, most of, sometimes they can be, some species are um, hermaphrodites where others are, are separate uh, uh, male and female, uh, separate gonads. And um, so there's all kinds of variations of how they reproduce. They just know for the most part, polyps reproduce asexually and the medusas for the hydrozoas reproduce sexually. So this is going to be a fun one. So the, uh, the hydrozoas, the, uh, the man of wars. The, the most common one we know of is the Portuguese man of war, right? And we can see some examples of it here. So this, most people look at this and go, oh, that's very clearly a jellyfish. No, 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 no. You gotta, when you start science, right? When you investigate it, when you look up more closely, you actually realize it's not a, a true jelly. It's not a jellyfish at all. It's actually multiple species of hydras all living together in a colony. So this is a, basically a floating space station of, of, uh, of different species that live together for and, and help each other out and it's really neat there are three different medusa species that compose the nematophore um, the nematophore again you can leave the p off to say nematophore uh, this is the sail so this sail and the base of the sail actually are made up of three different medusa forms of nadarians three different species the uh, the tentacles itself are made up of four different intertwined polyp variations of nadarians. 
and they composed the, the comedia, which is what we call this. This is the tail. Here's another good example of it, right? It's so the nematophore and the tail. All right. So when you look at this more closely, you'll start noticing that the tentacles occur in different colors and, and different lengths, um, and there's some different shapes that go on with it, and that's because of the different species that, that compose the comedia. Now, in, in most species uh, of, of man of wars, they have a cell that's on top of the nidophore, and it's actually filled with a gas. It's simply just filled with um, uh, essentially carbon dioxide, just what they're essentially cellular exhaling. Um, and that can actually has a, a trigger on it that can uh, deflate. So that way, if something was attacking them from above, or if the seas were rough, uh, they could actually deflate this, they'll sink down and uh, get out of harm's way, hopefully. So that's, that's really cool. Um, if you know anything about these, the reason they're called Portuguese Man of War is because um, uh, ba basically they are like little floating battleships. If you touch this, they will destroy you because their stings are legendarily painful. So the, the neurotoxins that they use are, are, are extremely dangerous. Uh, so if, even at, if you see these washed up on shore, do not mess with them because, and we do have them here in the Gulf of Mexico, okay, this is why I'm saying this. Uh, if you ever see these on the shore, do not mess with them. Stay away from them because the tentacles can still sting you because they're a pressurized capsule. Even after the jellyfish quote unquote dies, uh, the capsules can still be triggered and release their, their venom and you do not want to get stung by these. Even the broken off tentacles uh, can wash up on shore. You may never even see it, step on it and you're going to get, it feels like you're getting a bullet wound in your foot. So just be careful around these guys.